overnight, some coaching news that kind of came out of nowhere, where the Vegas Raiders have fired head coach Josh McDaniels and GM Dave Ziegler. Just middle of the night, not necessarily a news dump, but this is kind of how it works sometimes, especially in the NFL, and especially we're talking about Vegas, which is out west, so we're the last to know. But Mark Davis, the owner, released a statement saying this, quote, after much thought about what the Raiders need to move forward, I have decided to part ways with Josh and Dave. I want to thank both of them for their hard work. McDaniels, 9-16 and 16 in less than two seasons with the Raiders, including 3-5 and five this year, and it looks like linebackers coach Antonio Pierce will now take over on an interim basis as the head coach. I figured this would be coming at some point, Chelsea, but I don't think I expected it now. No, in-season firings, like mm, on Halloween in the middle of the week, it, they do feel yeah. very strange. So I'm wondering how this is affect the numbers. I haven't looked at the, the lines just yet, but I would imagine it moves it some. When you have this kind of chaos going on uh, with the Raiders, add that in with what's going on with Devontae Adams, who is not a happy camper. Uh, looks like the Raiders minus two and a half at home against the Giants still. I believe that line was three, so it has come down just a little bit. But, Jenks, do you think now is the time to get on the Giants train and fade the Raiders? Because I think that's my initial question is, do you think this team still oh, deserves God. to be favored? I don't know. I feel like that things have gotten so bad for the Raiders that this might actually inspire them. So I, I I would not touch this Raiders Giants game at all. I have no interest in betting this game. But you know how sometimes when just a new voice, just some new blood, just a new message can bring a team together, that can happen. At the same time, I don't know how much Josh McDaniels was loved or not loved in that locker room and whether there will be a complete retooling. So when this happens, it's kind of like the whole Jeff Saturday, Jeff Sunday thing. He won one game with the Colts, and he looked all world and couldn't win a thing. So it's really difficult to predict how a team is going to respond when something like this happens. I don't know. Do you think there's an angle now? Well, I don't know about that, but Jeff Saturday also didn't have Jimmy Garoppolo as his quarterback. Didn't he have at least <laughs> Matt Ryan who can complete a pass? Uh, so I think that's maybe. the other thing. It's just the personnel is not looking great for the Raiders, and Jimmy Garoppolo is one of the problems. So it's not all Josh McDaniel, but, like, is anybody surprised? Like, Josh McDaniel has never been successful as a head coach, but yet he get, keeps getting chance after chance after chance. I don't know why mm -hmm. they don't want to, like, bring some new blood into the coaching profession. Do you think Josh McDaniels is going to get another head coaching job? No. I think the Josh McDaniels experiment has run its course. He is now the only head coach to be fired by two different teams midseason. Happened, obviously, last <laughs> night with the Broncos in 2009. So, yeah, when you're making NFL history and you're on the wrong side of that history, I would say not going to happen again. But, of course, he'll find a spot as a coordinator because this is what the NFL does, right? He'll be brought onto someone's staff as an OC or some sort of assistant to the head coach because the NFL just recycles people again and again and again and again. It's, it's tiresome, but you know that's going to happen. Does adding Chase Young put the 49ers back in the conversation, Jenks? Oh, absolutely. This is a great... This is a great time to buy low on the 49ers if you're interested in San Francisco. Now, we know that they win by using their defense, but over the past three or four games, their defense, particularly their rush of the passer, has dropped off a little bit, which is exactly why they went after Chase Young. And I don't know if my memory serves me correctly, but I believe he and Nick Bosa played together at Ohio State. So they're going to be back together. And Chase Young, if you look at the advanced metrics, has been one of the most effective pass rushers in all the NFL this season it's just taken him a while to get back from that knee injury which caused him to miss 22 games so once they put the pieces back together on offense and remember as well Devo Samuel has been out but that is just adding when you're talking about Chase Young a, a huge piece to an already formidable defense so I absolutely believe this puts the Niners back in the conversation I don't think they left to begin with yeah, I think same for me. It's nice to have Chase Young on there now, but I like them in general because I'm not going to say, okay, the Niners look bad now and this is how this team's going to look in January because I just don't think it's the case. They've had some injuries. Uh, remember that Browns game? They had to finish without Christian McCaffrey and Debo Samuel. 
But now Chase Young on this defense, I think the main thing is he doesn't have to be the focal point of this defense. There are so many good pieces around him. Like Fred Warner is one of the best linebackers in the NFL. Nick Bosa, obviously very good. Eric Armstead, uh, the list goes on and on. So a great pickup for this Niners defense. And I think it'll be a nice change of pace for Chase Young getting to play for a contender. If, if all things are equal and the odds are telling you this is equal, I don't think the Rangers being perfect in the postseason on the road is, is really reflected in the number here. I think this is about these individual matchups, about these lineups. So if all things are equal, maybe that's just an edge for Texas. Yeah, this game's a pick em. It, it feels like the sports books have finally uh, wised up a bit, and they are giving the Diamondbacks some credit here. But the other thing is, the other storyline we have going is that this is an elimination game. And sometimes yeah. those type of games play a little differently. Usually unders with the play in elimination games because you have all hands on deck. The best pitchers are throwing, but it's only elimination game for one side. Say mm -hmm. if this was a game seven, we would have that angle for both sides of the ball. It's not the same deal for the Rangers, though, who I would imagine give a longer leash to Nathan of Baldy. They're not yeah. playing very desperate here. Um, but I do think that I would still lean towards the over here. You're seeing a total of eight runs, but think about these two offenses and namely think about the Rangers offense. Doesn't it feel like this Rangers offense is fully capable of hitting this over all by themselves in just about every game. Zach Gallon, I'll say is one of the better pitchers, obviously for the Diamondbacks, not quite as good as Merrill mm -hmm. Kelly's been. Uh, but still, even if he gives up say two or three runs, I think that the Rangers are fully capable of scoring at least a couple runs off of this bullpen. Mm. Maybe the X factor here is the Diamondbacks. What do we expect from this lineup that is very good at hitting for average, but not necessarily when it comes to driving in those runs? But something we saw last night, the Rangers' biggest weakness is their bullpen. So even if Evaldi doesn't give up many runs, their bullpen, who has been worn very thin during this postseason, mm -hmm is fully capable of coming in here and giving up a few runs. The advantage also lies with the Rangers in this game because it was very much a bullpen, bullpen game for the Diamondbacks last night. Uh, Mantiply started the game only went to like one and one third. On the other hand, you had Andrew Heaney going for the Rangers, who surprisingly mm -hmm. went five innings. So he saved some of the bullpen there. So Arizona already at a disadvantage there. Uh, but I think for me, I think my favorite play is going to be an out prop, but I would lean towards an over eight play if we are playing traditional plays. How in the world do you bet these NBA Cup games on Friday? Do you, do you attack them from a different angle? Give us your, your best practices, if you will, if you're looking <laughs> at betting on these. Yeah, well, Jinx, these are brand new for everyone in the league from players, yeah. coaches, fans, betters. So I'm not quite sure what the right answer is. It's it's going to be a lot of kind of wait for these first games on Friday. Every game on Friday is part of the NBA Cup and kind of see how teams approach those. My thought process is I'm going to look and factor in motivation a little bit more than I typically do because some teams – the younger teams that maybe aren't playing for a whole lot in terms of making into the postseason and going on a deep run, maybe those players try a little bit harder in, in these games because this is something that's attainable for them throughout the regular season. So just looking at like Warriors and Thunder on Friday, does Steph Curry really care about an NBA Cup title? I'm not so sure. But the Thunder, those young players, Chet Holmgren, Shea Gilders Alexander, this could mean something to them. So maybe maybe you look towards the Thunder there. Same with the Wizards and Heat. I'll probably be betting the Wizards on uh, Friday, which is a little scary because the Wizards are terrible. But Jimmy Butler has said how many times? Like, he does not care about anything but winning an NBA title. Mm -hmm. You think he's going to care about a NBA Cup uh, tournament game, group play game? I don't think so. A lot of money on the line, too. The winner of, the, of this uh, tournament at the end in Vegas, each player on that winning team wins $500,000. That's a lot of money for some of these younger players that are on these massive contracts. That means nothing to Steph Curry and Jimmy Butler, but to some of the mm -hmm. younger players, that's a lot of money. So that's kind of motivation is one of the biggest factors that I'm going to look at when handicapping these games, but it is going to be a lot of 
wait and see what happens Friday and then react towards the next round of those group play games.